All right, hi, my name is Kristen Houck. Um, I'm Assistant Managing Editor for the American Association for Clinical Chemistry. Um, I work on two journals now. I'm just gonna give you a little bit of background on me and on our journals, just so you can see where I'm coming at this topic from. Um, we have our two journals, Clinical Chemistry is well established. It's been in print since 1955. Um, it's both print and online. The Journal of Applied Laboratory Medicine is our new journal, just launched last year. It is online only and bi-monthly. Um, and it was created to take some of what we were rejecting from clinical chemistry, which is more cutting edge science, and put it into an applied journal where we could take some of those good papers that weren't getting published. Um, so our journal office when I began in 2009 as editorial coordinator, it was very small. Um, we had a team of four. It was very insulated. Um, we were really focused on producing the journal, um, that traditional container, and we were just starting to branch out into other media when I joined the team. Um, so in a couple of slides, you're, you're going to see where we are now and where we've gone with that, which you know, a couple of branches have turned into many. Um, where we are now is a team of seven editorial staff, one temp, and we're hoping to add two more full-time people by next year, um, one per journal. So I personally am overseeing production and the peer review process. I'm mostly managing our team and the workflow. Um, so really I'm coming at this from the journal perspective and how we've been trying to get outside of our little journal bubble. So this is our goal. This is who we're trying to reach with our initiatives. Um, our main audience and readership is laboratory medicine professionals. Um, obviously, we're trying to keep members, grow our membership, um, get people back that have left. Um, we're in a very big member drive right now. We're trying to get people on board. Um, and we're doing this in a lot of ways. We're trying to reach um, younger up-and-coming people in the field, students and trainees, also their mentors. Um, we're trying to reach a more international community and we're trying for the first time to reach the general public who probably don't know a whole lot about clinical chemistry and what the lab does and its role in healthcare. So that's what we're doing. Um, the association recently went through a period of changing leadership so we kind of redefined our focus, refined it, at the same time we broadened it to kind of cover all these different areas where in the past we were very focused on serving our current members and weren't really looking outside of that too much. So this is just kind of a sample of where we are now and I'm not going to go into every one of these um, if there's something that you'd like to know more about, you can ask during the question section. But these are a few of the ways that we're getting our content seen by more than just our members and our subscribers, even though that's still our primary audience. And also how we're kind of breaking out of the traditional article container. Um, one of our biggest initiatives, um, the CCTC, is the Clinical Chemistry Training Council. It's an editorial initiative that um, our editor-in-chief editor dreamed up a few years back, and we put it into in place. Um, it's free. It's it takes a lot of our journal content. Um, we have clinical case studies, we have journal club, we have Q and A's, and um, all these things we've pulled together into a free platform for um, people who are just kind of starting out. Um, we have clinical case study emails that go out, journal club emails that go out that um, people will subscribe to. We have our app, we have um, strong social media, our podcasts, audio summaries of individual articles, and also a compilation of summaries of every article in each issue. Um, we also have two of our other major publications at AACC are CLN and LTO. It's Clinical Laboratory News, which is um, a newsletter, an e-newsletter that goes out, and LTO is Lab Tests Online. It's a um, very popular um, public-facing part of AACC. It's a, um, it's a site that you can go to if you've had a lab test done and you can find out more about it and get to understand what your test results mean. 
So that's very popular and that will pull content also from some of our other publications. Um, and our annual meeting, we do sessions where we take, kind of take um, the content off the page and bring it to life and we do like a hot topic session. Um, we've done joint publications. We did one in 2015 with BMJ in radiology. Um, so these are all just, uh, just tons of different ways that we've been getting our content out and these are all really kind of new um, since I began and it was just journal article. And a big thing to point out with a lot of these is really they do require cooperation with other departments. So a lot of times I'm, we're working with our IT department, we're working with our meetings department to make these things happen. So there's a lot of coordination, there's a lot of realizing that everybody's under constraints and limitations and we can't always get everything done and executed or maybe not as quickly as we would like. So our most recent initiative is our uh, publications core committee. So we had an association-wide strategic planning session in 2015 and it was decided that uh, we should form uh, committees of members covering several different areas. Um, and the one that most applies here is our publications core committee. Um, and this is really member driven. Staff is minimally involved. Um, really it's members deciding what they want to see happen, how we can best represent their interests and fill in gaps that they've identified and they'll come to us and say, we have this idea, is it possible? Um, so really they've, we've been charged as a publications department with increasing collaboration among our publications. So where we've been really focused on journals, um, we are now looking holistically at the journals, clinical laboratory news and lab tests online as pubs as a whole and making much more of a concerted effort to share topics with each other every month. So from where I stand, I'm putting out the journal every month. I'm sharing what, um, you know, I'm sharing our TOC, I'm sharing what we're putting out with CLN and LTO. And they're deciding if they can use any of that content in their platforms. And likewise, they're letting us know if they have anything related and we haven't done this yet, but we're going to begin including a box at the end of each article with related content. So we're all going to be driving readers to one another, whereas we've been very much in those silos up until now. So another one of our immediate goals, which is going to be, I think, a recurring theme on this panel, um, taxonomy. I really don't think that you can successfully achieve integration of any kind without doing this. Um, so admittedly, we haven't. So if you did go to our association website and test this out and try to do a search, you might not have the best success. Um, but it's something that we've identified as a very present need. Um, so soon enough, readers will be able to go do a single search, find everything they need, not just for the journal, all our publications, all our different initiatives, and really just continued collaboration and open communication between all of our teams. So here again are just a few of our most recent successes. Um, I think the one that we're, one of the ones we're proudest of is the AACC Learning Lab, which we've done in collaboration with NEJM. So not only are we breaking down silos within the association, we're also really trying to break out and collaborate with um, other organizations and really try to look at innovative ways. Um, and the Learning Lab is using the NEJM Knowledge Plus uh, platform and it's an adaptive learning initiative. So um, experts are putting together learning modules. Um, an individual will take a test in preparation for you know, their exams and um, it identifies where your weaknesses are so as you take the test, it will tell you you need to learn more about uh, this or that area and then it will have you retake and it will just keep adapting and adapting to you. So that's pretty exciting. Um, the AACC Artery is our internal social media uh, network. 
So it's for members only, and uh, different departments are beginning to use it to leverage um, just driving people to different content. So it's a way we can, it's just one more way we can promote our content to members and get a discussion going. So we've made a real concerted effort not to just say, there's this new article available, you know, go check it out, but to actually start a real substantive conversation about what that is and to do that, you know, cross-promotionally with our different publications as well. Um, I also want to mention the Teats textbook, which is considered the Bible of clinical chemistry, basically. Um, this year, uh, its latest edition was edited by our editor-in-chief, and he made a real push to um, have a lot of our journal content included. So some of our clinical chemistry trainee council educational content, some of our webinars, our podcasts, um, a lot of our content is now available in the online version of TEATS, which we published in collaboration with Elsevier. So there's a lot going on here. Um, and it's, it's beginning to come together and become something where you know, members and others can just find our content in just a million different ways, and we're not just in our journal box anymore. So here are some of our links um, if you want to learn more about any of our initiatives, and I will hand this off to Helene.